Good morning. I welcome all of you to this virtual fall opening convocation. We are pleased that you could join us for this first convocation of the 2021-2022 academic year. We especially welcome the eminent associates of the university who would normally be present with us during this time. But we are here virtually again. While we realize that the university is not immune from a best of times, worst of times scenario, fortunately, although the pandemic is at an all time high right now, and has challenged our collective bodies, minds, and souls, it forces us to devise diverse interventional strategies. Our hope is that we will be able to greet you in person very soon. Thank you, Eminent Associates, for all of your support to Alma Mater. We appreciate every effort. To the wonderful class of 2025, we welcome you once more to these hallowed grounds of Booker T. Washington. We are glad that you are here to share the Tuskegee experience with us during the next four or more years. We want you to have a great student experience while you are at Tuskegee, and we are consistently working toward that particular goal. To all of you on the link today, Keep one Tuskegee in mind and spirit as we advance this institution forward. Our convocation program today will proceed in this way. The invocation will be offered by the Reverend Michael Thurman, Assistant Chaplain. Greetings from the Chair of the Tuskegee University Board of Trustees by Ms. Norma Clayton and from the President of the Student Government Association, Ms. Lauren Johnson, followed by the anthem, Holy Is He, from the Golden Voices Concert Choir under the direction of Dr. Wayne Barr. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we enter this academic year here at Tuskegee Universities with our eyes stayed on you. Foremost in our thoughts these days is our safety as society makes attempts to reopen following a most horrific year, with many still reeling in the aftermath of the devastation from the novel coronavirus. God, as we embark upon this new academic year, we thank you for a relative safe mitigation during this pandemic season we pray for continued success this semester as we continue to adjust policies and procedures to accommodate the varying challenges of coexisting with this virus. We pray for members of the Tuskegee University family who have been affected by COVID-19 and as of late, Hurricane Ida. Continue to imbue our leaders with wisdom and guidance as they deliberate decisions in the best interests of the university and public health and help the rest of us to follow the protocols set in place for our own good. Most holy God, creator of all mankind, we give you thanks, honor, and praise for your creative energies. You made us in your own image with the power of mind and thought. As we gather in this virtual sanctuary, we ask that you impress upon us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and because of this, we have a moral duty and obligation to strive to live up to your perfect reputation. Forgive us, O oh God, where we falter and miss the mark, but embed in us that desire for all that is good and perfect. As we convene this morning, we ask for your guidance to help us model the professional standards and values to which our students may aspire. Help us to reflect the values of our founding fathers as we educate the mind, body, and spirit to instill in our students the importance of the virtues of excellence. We thank you for the sacrifices their parents and grandparents are making to make this self-development pursuit possible. 
Thank you for the fulfillment of dreams, hopes, and aspiration. Bless this fall convocation this morning as we challenge students, faculty, and staff to strive for excellence in all that we do. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you. President Morris, Mayor Haygood, distinguished guests, members of the Tuskegee Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, administration, parents, alumni, friends, and most importantly, students. On behalf of the Tuskegee University Board of Trustees, I bring you greetings and welcome you to the 2021-2022 academic year and our fall convocation. Let me be the first to say that TU's best days lie ahead. Like you, we are so excited to be back on campus and to have you back home. On this special day, we recognize and take pride in welcoming our newest members, whether they be faculty, staff, administration, incoming freshmen, transfer students, graduate students, and returning students to Tuskegee. I also want to give a special shout out to our returning sophomore class who, like many of us, were disappointed that their first year of college was interrupted by a global pandemic. We all shared in that disappointment and we're doing everything that we can to ensure that everyone's remaining years at this institution provide you with a well-rounded academic, social, leadership, and community experience. TU is on the move. You've maintained your position as a top-ranking HBCU. You've continued to fundraise, raising money for student scholarships and other financial support. You're also investing in your infrastructure, both in campus housing and in other academic buildings. You are finding new and better ways to provide services to all students. We've also named a new president, Dr. Charlotte Morris, who is charged with leading this institution and ensuring that you have the resources you need to be successful. The university will soon roll out a new five-year strategic plan aimed at Tuskegee's growth. In the coming weeks, you will hear about several projects to improve student success, outcome measures, learning environments around the campus. We are so excited about these projects and look forward to their completion. The Board of Trustees is charged with not only supporting Dr. Morris, but supporting the entire university leadership as they not only move the university forward, but as they move initiatives forward and become an even greater partner in this community. We are asking for your support as well. As I stated earlier, convocation is a very important day in your academic experience. It is a rite of passage ceremony, which invites you to join in the mission the vision and the core values and principles of this institution. It also marks the beginning for some and the continuance of others in your academic work, both in learning, leading, living, and working together in community. It is a time when you turn the page and begin a new journey towards your life's work. It also affirms our commitment and the commitment of this university and community to your success. As a board, it is our job to support the university in its mission and endeavor to create an environment of thoughtful inquiry, leadership, learning, service, and respect to others and to you. These are some of the attributes that we want you to take with you as you go into your own community and make your mark on the world. Your academic experience is designed to be rigorous. It's designed to challenge your thinking, your belief systems, and your assumptions. 
I encourage you to fully utilize all of the resources that are afforded to you and to use your time wisely. Remember why you are here. Embrace the university's values and principles and incorporate them into your learning and into all of your actions. We also want you to have fun and enjoy your college experience. You've earned the first bookend of your life's journey. And that was when you were accepted and came to this university. Earning the second bookend, which is commencement and the conferring of your degrees is your story to write. Your first chapter is already underway and we look forward to seeing how your total story unfolds. We believe in you and we believe in your dreams and we believe in this great institution, but it is up to you to do the work. I hope that you will reflect on all that you've seen and all that you've heard today. We are so proud to have you here on this campus and we are honored to be a part of your life's journey. We look forward to your continued success. Thanks for listening, be safe, and be well. Greetings, I am Lauren Johnson, a senior information technology major from Montgomery, Alabama, and I serve as the Student Government Association President for the 2021-2022 school year. And on behalf of my administration, I bring you greetings. This has been a trying time for us all, but as we navigate through the pandemic, we strive to overcome all the obstacles that we may face. Let us continue to stay safe as we strive to return to a sense of normalcy at our dear institution. Once again, I am Lauren Johnson, the SGA president at the illustrious Tuskegee University, and I wish you all well.
to present and introduce to others our speaker for the fall opening convocation. He is one of our own family members here at Tuskegee University. Dr. Gregory S. Gray Sr. has served as Dean of the Chapel and University Professor of Religion and Society for the past 22 years. He has been an ordained member of the clergy for over 50 years. A native of Gary, Indiana, Dr. Gray is the son of the late Mrs. Delia and the late Mr. Randolph V. Gray, Sr. He was educated in the Gary, Indiana public school system and earned the Bachelor of Science degree from Manchester University, North Manchester, Indiana, the Master of Divinity degree from the Interdenominational Theological Center, Morehouse School of Religion, and he has done graduate work in the Division of Religion of Emory University. He holds a PhD degree from Emory University's Graduate Institute of the Liberal Arts. Dr. Gray has done postdoctoral work at Emory University and the Baltimore Washington Center. Additionally, he has done professional development at the Harvard University School of Education's Institute for Management and Leadership in Education. Prior to coming to Tuskegee University, Dr. Gray served 18 years on the faculty of Morehouse College, teaching in the departments of philosophy, religion, and psychology. He holds membership in the American Academy of Religion, the, um, the National Association of College and University Chaplains, among others. He served on the faculty, his service on the faculty has included the teaching of eight different courses. He also served as chair of the Committee on Convocations and Special Events 
and on the Dean's Council. For 12 years, Dr. Gray rendered community engagement as pulpit supply at the Westminster Presbyterian Church in Tuskegee. Dr. Gray and his wife, Linda Diane, who is also a member of the staff at Tuskegee University, have two adult children and one grandson. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present Dr. Gregory S. Gray, Dean of the Chapel and University Professor of Religion and Society. Today, he will speak from the subject, Go With What You Got. I wish to thank Tuskegee University President, Dr. Charlotte Patterson Morris, for her introduction and for the invitation to share with you on this occasion. I was the third of five children born to Mrs. Delia Gray, who was a wife, homemaker, and Sunday school teacher, and Rudolph Gray, who was a husband industrial engineer, and Boy Scout leader. One of the most important lessons I learned from my parents and continue to learn even after their departing this life is to go with what you got. Regardless of your name, age, race, gender identity, hometown, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, religious faith, or sexual orientation, regardless of your lifestyle, your life story, or where you are in the life cycle, you must be able to go with what you got. Even now, during the most serious global health crisis in our lifetimes, we are challenged to address our denial our fatigue, and even our fatalism. But regardless of your ups and downs, your wins and your losses, your victories and your defeats, your successes and your failures, you must be able to apply yourself, devote yourself, even consecrate yourself to the abundant living of life as much as anyone else. You must be able to go with what you got. I remember many years ago speaking with a former president of Atlanta University, Dr. Cleveland Denard, who had recently been diagnosed with cancer. As I attempted to hear what this meant to him, what perspective he was taking on that experience, he said to me, well, sir, I see it this way. In life, you go with the hand that you're dealt. I heard Dr. Denard saying, you go with what you got. Wouldn't it be something if we could all start out in life at the same place? If we could all start out with the same basic advantages and disadvantages, potentials and limitations. However, what we discover, and not a minute too soon, is that we have fundamental differences. There are haves and there are have-nots. There are sufficiencies and there are insufficiencies. There are credits here and debits there. There is a surplus here and a shortage there. There is a presence here and an absence there, and it may not seem fair that some people are born into this world with seemingly everything a person could ask for, and others not even enough to just get by. It may not seem fair that some people seem to get away with all kinds of moral indiscretions, shall we call them, while others get caught and receive severe penalties for seemingly minor infractions. It may not seem fair that the sun shines on the righteous and the wicked, the rain falls upon the just as well as upon the unjust. It may not seem fair 
But here's an observation for you. And for all 7.9 billion human beings populating the earth, life ain't always fair. But the counsel I'm here to offer you this morning is the same counsel that my parents gave to me. Learn how to go with what you got. These words are not just a cliche used in order to have something to say. These words do not mean simply resigning yourself to things as they are and essentially going nowhere. It's tempting for some of us to say to the world, you didn't give me much to work with, so don't expect much work from me. Who would reasonably expect you to fulfill yourself by settling for the inadequate, accepting the unacceptable, accomplishing less than what you're capable of? Who would reasonably expect you to fulfill your destiny by maintaining mediocrity or being satisfied with the unsatisfactory or being pleased with that in which there is no pleasure? Hear those words, go with what you got. These words can be a difficult challenge when you really want to give your best to something, I mean really want to give your best to it. You want to put your heart, soul, mind, and strength into the effort, but life doesn't seem to be helping you out. You may not have everything you want. You may not have everything you need. You may not have the ideal conditions, equipment, or supplies which enable you to offer the best practices. You may not have the same thing everybody else has. So you may feel you, may feel you have challenges that nobody else has. But in spite of it all, you've still got to go with what you got. How do you do that? Here are five suggestions of how to go with what you got. Suggestion one, remember that model of the United Negro College Fund? Of course we do. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. When I consider the mental health of Native Americans, African Americans, and some other groups, sometimes I think that people in these historically and culturally marginalized groups have a right to be crazy. Sometimes I think that Native Americans and African Americans have a right to be diagnosed as psychopathic, narcissistic, schizoid, paranoid, depressive, masochistic, obsessive, compulsive, hysterical, dissociative identity disorder, and all of the above. But then I say to myself, but the most admirable qualities, hear this now, the most admirable qualities of our ancestors include the ability to endure circumstances that might have driven others crazy. And then they took those circumstances and used them to excel. Here's a second suggestion of how we might go with what you got. And it refers to our history and culture. Someone has written the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. Ah, to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. It's one thing to learn about history, but another thing to learn from history 
and develop strategies for living out your history. You may not be able to fix your past as an individual or as a kindred people, but your past can go on disabling you. Today we speak of Black Lives Matter as a movement that began in July of 2013 after the acquittal of George Zimmerman in the shooting death of African-American Trayvon Martin in February of 2012. From my perspective, some of our African ancestors learned what's called Black Lives Matter 400 years ago in 1619, before they got off the slave ships at Jamestown, Virginia. Black Lives Matter. I'm not as interested in trying to change the minds of all white supremacists as I am interested in reminding all absent-minded black people what they should have never forgotten. Recently, I saw a picture of a one-room schoolhouse in which one colored teacher taught several grades of colored students in that one schoolroom. As I looked in the face of this teacher, I did not see anguish or despair or defeatism or a sense of futility or depression or any number of things that might have discouraged her. But her sense of presence is what I saw. Her sense of presence and her gentle smile that brought to mind the words of a song, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And as I looked into the face of this teacher, I said to myself, how dare any African American become a victim of social amnesia, allowing your historical and cultural heritage to be forgotten or stolen. Talk about post-traumatic stress syndrome. We've got 400 years worth. How dare any African American to forget, to ignore, to dismiss the fact that we have had to fight, to fight to come from the back of the bus, to fight living in segregation, to fight for the right to vote, to fight separate and unequal schools, to fight substandard housing, to fight unfair laws and unjust courts and unemployment, and fight for equal employment opportunities. We have had to fight poverty and hunger. I once heard a Tuskegee Airman say, we even had to fight for the right to fight. Here is a third suggestion for going with what you got. The capacity for healthy, constructive self-examination. It is one of the most valuable possessions of a person or a group. Whether you're talking about critical race theory, being used or thrown out of school curriculums, or just humming the melody to Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror, every human being, all 7.9 billion, 
needs a healthy, strong, consistent sense of self that comes partly from being able to look at ourselves openly and honestly, and as Michael Jackson would have said, make that change. Each of us knows what it's like to engage in self-contradictory, self-defeating behavior, setting ourselves up to fail, or allowing others to set us up to fail. Certain values, our own or those of the culture, can warp your soul. How can you have healthy self-esteem if people have been reduced to dollars and cents, or if humanity has been reduced to a commodity, if flesh and blood has been reduced to property, if human beings have been reduced to inanimate things, if subjects have been reduced to objects. Healthy self-esteem is not allowing yourself to be used, confused, or abused. Spending your life reinventing the wheel or anything else we can waste time reinventing. Living on planet Earth means developing the capacity to adapt to your environment, including other people, and thriving instead of just surviving. Here is a fourth clue or suggestion to go with what you got. Do so without jealousy or envy. I've seen a picture, a cartoon picturing two cows separated by a fence. No, these are not the same two cows saying, eat more chicken. Those cows are under contract with Chick-fil-A. But each of these cows separated by a fence has its head sticking through the fence, eating from the other cow's pasture. Jealousy and envy must not prevent you from gratefully appreciating what others may have to offer. Likewise, you must refuse to allow other people's envy of you to spoil your contribution, to discredit your ability, to ruin your reputation so that they can feel better about themselves. We need not apologize for not being someone else. We are only challenged to be who we are. Of the total 107 historically black colleges and universities, we don't need to be anybody other than Tuskegee University. Of the 10 top rated HBCUs in US News and World Report, we don't need to be anybody other than Tuskegee University. We don't need to be Spelman College, Howard University, Xavier University, Hampton University, Morehouse College, Florida A&M University, North Carolina A&T, Claflin University, or Fisk University. I don't want to be anyone other than Tuskegee University. And here is a fifth and final suggestion in order to go with what you got. And it is perseverance. Perseverance. 
You and I must be determined to go in spite of the uncertainties of life, in spite of unforeseen issues, unexpected setbacks, unanticipated disappointments, pandemics, hurricanes, and Afghanistans. We will find courage, not in the absence of fear, but in the very face of it. This university is attempting to lay a valuable foundation, a foundation designed not to make every graduate a celebrity, a superstar, or a multi-billionaire, but a foundation designed to provide each graduate with something called character. Our graduates are being sent into a world that requires character to face both the challenges and the opportunities of life. And these challenges and opportunities include social justice, voting rights, equal housing, climate change, job training, quality education, the digital divide among so many others, the challenge to make a difference in the world, refusing to throw your life away, refusing to complain your life away, refusing to regret your life away, refusing to be controlled by things over which you have no control. Stop focusing on what you don't have. Go with what you do have. Take what's in your hand and use it to the glory of God. Stop listening to the naysayers, the runaway and hide folks, the I told you so folks, the you've never been nothing and you'll never be anything folks. Instead, Change the circumstances, transform the situation, reverse the condition, go with what you've got, work with what you've got, love with what you've got, build with what you've got, create with what you've got, endure with what you've got, strive with what you've got, struggle with what you've got, persevere with what you've got, and even groove with what you've got. I've come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe God brought me this far to leave me. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Gray, for that inspiring and wonderful message. I want all of you to know that when we are back to normal, if we can get back to normal operations, Dr. Gray will be here in the chapel every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. And now the spiritual I know the Lord laid his hands on me, featuring soprano Brooke Jackson and the Tuskegee University Golden Voices Concert Choir. I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord laid his hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know laid his hands on me. I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord's laid his hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord's laid his hands on me. Ah. Uh -huh. 
just read the induction since our students are not before us. We, the class of 2025 and other new students of Tuskegee University, are conscious of our obligation to be both scholarly students in our academic task and responsible citizens in our deportment. Joining the several hundred students enrolled at this historic institution, we commit ourselves to be serious and civil participants in the Tuskegee experience, to abide by the policies and guidelines of the university, and to honor its noblest tradition by our steady pursuit of excellence. We pledge to further develop in ourselves high standards of integrity and competence, to become authentic seekers of truth through disciplined mastery of the tools of discovery, analysis, evaluation, and presentation of insight and of information. Acquire the best that this institution has to offer through its mission of education, research, and service, and to never forget that along with this grand opportunity to study here, comes an equally large responsibility to preserve and enhance this place for generations of students yet to come. We dedicate ourselves over the next four or more years to a preparation which is so rigorous, thorough, and efficient that for the rest of our lives, we shall never want to stop learning so that we will be thus empowered to compete with confidence in a rapidly changing global society. At a deeper level, we pledge to be kind and just to others, to celebrate life's joys, to meet life's challenges with courage and dignity, and to help make life better for all of the world's people. At this time, we will have the presentation of the Student Government Association Ms. Tuskegee University and court, Mr. Tuskegee and gentlemen, and the student ambassadors by Dr. Kimberly Scott, Vice President for Student Affairs. Good morning and thank you for joining us at the fall convocation today. My name is Kimberly Scott and I serve as your Vice President for Student Affairs. I'm here today to introduce our wonderful student scholar leaders. Leadership is about motivating, inspiring, and directing others towards a shared purpose and common goal for the greater good of the organization. I am so very proud to welcome and introduce to you our young scholars who endeavor to leave their leadership footprint on Mother Tuskegee. First, I introduce to you our Student Government Association, Ms. Lauren Johnson, who serves as the 2021-2022 president and she is from Montgomery, Alabama. Next we have the 92nd Miss Tuskegee and her royal court led by Jasmine McCullum of Tupelo, Mississippi. I introduce to you Mr. Tuskegee University and gentlemen led by Lorenzo Winston of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. 
Finally, we have our university ambassadors who welcome our guests and friends of the university, led by Kaylin Clemens of Mobile, Alabama. Join me in welcoming our Golden Voices Concert Choir as they present the Tuskegee Song under the direction of Dr. Wayne Barr, and he will be accompanied by Mrs. Brenda Shuford. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace.